This is Drop Tent Media Network. Uh -huh. High IQ basketball with Brian Isley uh, and Raymond Bird. What's going one. on, bro? I'm going to go for like a, like a quadruple double. Uh -huh. Welcome, everybody, to the very first episode of High IQ basketball with Brian Isley. I am your host, Brian Isley, and with me is my right hand man, 50 grand, 25 in each hand, Raymond Bird. What's going on, bro? What's going on, B? Appreciate you. Yeah, man. Yeah. And we got super producer Neil from Drop Top, Drop Tent, you know what I mean, in the building. Hey. Uh, this is our very first episode. Very excited. It's been a long time in the making. I always wanted to do something, you know, wanted to do a project with my man. This is my best friend right here. We, Our friendship is based on basketball, right? Absolutely. So, you know, this is what we do. This is what we talk about. And we talk about it at the highest of levels. This is why it's called high IQ basketball. Cause we probably one of the, we probably two of the, two of the smartest basketball minds of that, that we know. Me being one, you being two. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's up for debate. We got a whole hour to do that. that, that that's fine with me. But, uh, yeah, you, you might be, you might be, I like, I, I, I fancy you as the uh, the tactician, GM, coach, and I'm the I'm the historian, statistics guy. I give you that. I give you that. Yeah, you know I mean, because you know you <laughs> you don't you don't care about <laughs> the what 19, past the 1940s. Yeah, <laughs> the pinch basket. You don't care, don't about, care about the that. you don't care about the when 40s. You don't the, care uh, about the. In the crab basket, the I crab basket. I <laughs> I know about everything. I, I probably know too much about stuff that's going on back then. I don't think you care about anything beyond the three the three point line. Facts. If, if it if it's before the three point line, anything he doesn't before care. Magic and Bird. So anything pre modern era, yo. Anything pre Magic and Bird, you know what I mean? That's that's considered. I'm a little vague. That's. <laughs> <laughs> That's considered the modern era bird and, and and magic when they came in to save the NBA when it was full of coke and what have you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's another subject for another day. We got uh the way this show is set up, we have we we set it up like a game. It's uh it's four quarters, uh four 12 minute quarters. We have four topics, and then at the end of each episode, we'll have something we call uh OT. I know y'all think that's overtime, but it's really called off topic where we'll discuss something that has nothing to do with basketball. It's not basketball related, but we feel as though we need to speak on it. Um, I have a hell of a topic for OT at the end of the show. <laughs> we'll get to that later. Uh, the first topic of today, first quarter, is uh, we're going to get into the league, the upcoming season, and um, the parody that's in the NBA right now. Uh, Ray and I have been staunch advocates of, of competition in the league. And we believe that the better all the teams are, the better the league is. And I think we're in a good spot right now. Do you agree? Absolutely. I mean, we outside of that Kevin Durant being in Golden State where you got, you know, one team that is the clear cut favorites. Yeah. Bar an injury. And I think this year you got, you know, you got maybe six, seven, eight teams that got a legit claim that they can win it all. Legit claim. To, yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, has it really it, it's it's been like that though. I mean, not not KD going to state and all that. That was that was a terrible era for basketball, I believe. But um you you said you go back as far as Magic and Bird. I don't think they had six, seven, eight teams, but I, I'm, I'm I think it's safe to say they had at least four or five teams. The, the league is always top heavy, right? Right. As far as contenders go, then there's everybody else uh, fighting to get to that spot in the middle of the pack. Then you got the bottom of the barrel teams. But I think for the for the last forty. 40 some odd years or so, it has been at least four or five. I'm not sure. I think uh during the mic run, you had Chicago and you had everybody else. I think, I mean, especially you had that pre free agent. And we spoke, we spoke about this offline many times where yeah. you know you had a lot of teams weren't chasing each other. You know, Brown wins the championship and 
all of a sudden, you know, teams, everybody makes moves. Katie goes to Golden State. You know, you can go back over the course of time where you see a team win a championship. Like this past year, Denver wins it all. And then mm -hmm. you see Dame in Milwaukee. You see everybody, you know, all of a sudden Bill's in Phoenix. Teams adjust. Teams chase you. Mm -hmm. During the Mike era, you had to, the team stayed the same. I mean, with the exception of Barkley going to Phoenix, you ain't have a lot of movement. You ain't have a lot of teams chasing what they had to try to beat them. You had New York who were on their heels in the Eastern Conference. New York came back with the same team every year. So I think the Mike errors, they were the clear favor. You'd have been surprised to see them lose. Yeah, you you are 100% right. That's, that's, that's a high IQ statement right there from, <laughs> from Raymond Burr. You, you, you would think he wasn't new to this. <laughs> that's a great take. I, I agree. I tend to agree. I, I, I think for, for the sake of the show, um, we need to refrain from agreeing too much. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to argue. I think that's what people like these days is arguments. But, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you on that. Um, I also agree that we need parity in the league. Um, I think this year is going to be great. It's highly anticipated with all the movements that you just uh, mentioned with Dame being in Milwaukee and um, Boston, who is my pick to, to win it all. I you know that's, that's crazy coming from a Lakers fan, right? I mean, Boston's but, tough. You know, they got a, a, a strong five, but their two superstars are still, you know, they still make a lot of mistakes, especially when it's time to close out games, turnovers and such. We've seen Tatum be huge in these moments, and we mm -hmm. also seen him be, come up small, you know. So I don't know what to expect from Boston. They're going to be great. But they're going to have a great regular season record. They're going to win close to 60 games, if not more than 60 games. They're going to be a yeah. one-two seed in the Eastern Conference. But at the end of the day, if I got to pick somebody come up off of that side, not not a favorite to win it all, but just coming out of the East, on with proving Giannis. Giannis is proven. Giannis is proven in 2021. And you put Dame next to him. Like we always say, like Giannis' biggest issue is that he ain't got his game doesn't tailor to him being able to necessarily close because right. he can't shoot the basketball. He can't really, if he can't get to the rim, he's not as effective. Now you put Dame next to him, you put a closer, and you take into account Middleton can also close games, mm -hmm. they're going to be tough to beat. And they already have an identity. They do have an identity. Uh, they do have an identity, player-wise. I don't know how that's going to – I don't know how the dynamic is going to change with Dame being there and with Middleton sliding to the third option now and also had to take into consideration they had a coaching change. So the culture may be a little different, but as far as Giannis goes, who is the face of the franchise and the best player on the team, his mentality is still intact. His way about going things is still intact. It's a matter of him uh, letting that be known with the head coach and the new coaching staff with Dame. Middleton already knows what it is. Lopez already knows what it is. Bobby Portis already knows what it is. Uh, Giannis's bum ass brother already knows what it is, but <laughs> pick his nose <laughs> <laughs> between timeouts. Right? That's crazy, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they got it on. Oh, they filmed it too. They, they picking his nose is just wow. That's crazy. Hey, he was going. Hey, I know they know people were watching him, <laughs> and then he was still going too. Like they going around crazy. Here, it's different rules. They ain't from around here. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. They ain't the problem around here. That's a different culture all together. I, I, I don't think they picking their noses all crazy. But <laughs> yeah, you know, what they so. doing behind, behind the camera is <laughs> not on behind closed they, doors. They did that when the camera's on. You know <laughs> behind I mean? closed doors, it's different time. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. But um, that's a very interesting dynamic. Another interesting dynamic is like I said in Boston, they uh acquired two new starters Przingis and drew holiday what's your what's your feeling about boston and their acquisitions over the summer i mean you can't help but i mean that, that's that's big time i mean Przingis has to me failed as you know a first option and as a number two but now you put him in a position where he's a number three and then you add in that that stabilizer you know the guy's gonna calm the season that's drew because drew brings 
everything to the table. You know, he's a, I mean, he's a soft spoken leader. You know, he's going to be the one, he's not like Marcus Smart. He's not going to be screaming and yelling in the huddle, but he a leader and, and he's, his ball game is tailored to fit next to these guys. Like he can get his own bucket. Mm -hmm. He can play off the ball mm -hmm. and he's still a very tenacious defender. So I think, you know, you didn't really lose anything with Marcus Smart. You gain, you got, you still got the same caliber defender. Now you got a guy who not only can shoot the trade ball off the ball, but he can also get his own bucket and he's an underrated playmaker. So, you know what I mean? The things that they was, they thought they gained by adding Brogdon, mm -hmm. you know, you still get those things. So I think Dane replaces both of them, Brogdon and Marcus Smart, and you get a little bit more. Here's the thing about uh, Przingis. You said he failed in his other stops. Uh, I mean, we, we got to put things in the, uh, in its proper context, I think. Uh, New York. Unicorn. When he, when, he, when he got there, yes, he was the unicorn. Special. You call you Special. a unicorn? You, Wimby's a unicorn. A absolutely. He's, expectations come along with that title. But, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. But with that being said, Carmelo was still there. Carmelo still felt he was the guy. Uh, Porzingis was the second, third option at times. And then once Carmelo left, I think Porzingis tore his ACL. Right. So there's the circumstances right there in New York that were out of his control. Um, he had flashes of brilliance, which is <laughs> which showed people why he was drafted so high by the Knicks and showed people why he earned the nickname the Unicorn. Uh, then I believe he went from New York to Dallas, right? And had a team with Luca. We all know that Luca's usage rate is probably the highest in the league. He has the ball in his hands all the time. Everything runs through him, and that's the sole reason why he's. You you said it yourself on on many occasions where we talk. He's probably the hardest superstar to build a team around. Because he has the ball in his hands constantly. Um, and again, KP got hurt. He got hurt at the most crucial time in the playoffs when they were had a chance to 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 beat the Clippers in in the bubble. Right. Uh in Washington, Washington was just trash. I mean, you I, everything you say, I, I agree with you. Yeah. But is it's, he still failed? You you went to <laughs> Dallas as the second option, playing next to Luca. You know the expectations were, you know, we can get to the finals. I, mm -hmm. I think what Luca got to the conference finals the year without him by itself, and then you added Prazingis. So you expected, oh, right, that's what the, we're going to be able to get over the hump with this guy. That's a very good. And point. you got knocked off. What, what he got knocked off in the first round of the first year they got him. Yes. You go to Washington, and you know this is this a you know a bailout. It, all right, it failed with us. We're gonna trade you over here to grab some pieces. Mm -hmm. Go crazy. You put. He, I think Washington brought him over here. So right, maybe you can save the bill transition. You come over here and you turn back into the unicorn, and you know that that convince Bill to stay. Didn't turn out that way. You know he, he didn't put out the incredible numbers. Mm -hmm. He put out average numbers, and then you. I mean, then you. Think about the transition to Boston. You're still talking to maybe they're not as high usage as Luca. Between the two, they probably are. Like you two, two, two guys who put up shots. You're speaking of Tatum and Brown. Brown, they're gonna both put up 15 to 20 shots a night. So you fall into this third role where you weren't happy with being the second role. So I, I mean, I think you gotta tailor what your expectations are for him. He gives you 15, 10 boards, plays great defense. They'll be happy. I don't think you get in unicorn again. So, I mean, I'm not saying it, it'll fail because it can still work because mm. I think his role is just going to be different. Back to the uh, Luka uh, situation. It's not just Porzingis, as we saw with uh, Kyrie landing in Dallas. When they played together, Luka and Kyrie, they ended up 8-12. and 12. And they winded up missing the playoffs. Tougher transition, though. You're talking about two guys who need the basketball, and you it's a midseason trade. I think you got to judge that more off of this year than you got to do it off of last oh, year. Oh, we definitely gonna judge it. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be judged. Like I said, uh, under 500, eight and twelve. I understand it was a midseason trade. Uh, two 
uh, ball dominant guards. I absolutely agree with you on that, but Kyrie just re upped. This is going to be what it is. So we got to figure it, they got to figure out if that's going to take them to the promised land. Like Luca wants to win a championship, Kyrie wants to win another championship, Mark Cuban wants to win another championship. So Mark Cuban is going all in and re signed Kyrie and kept him in Dallas. I want to see how that turns out. I don't think it's going to turn out the way people think it's going to turn out. I mean, I, expertise for me is maybe second round. I mean, you look at the Western Conference. It's, is that best case scenario? Luka's dangerous. Like, we've seen Luka by himself get to the conference final. We've seen Luka go mm-hmm. against the Clippers when they had Paul George and healthy Kawhi, and he put him on the brink of elimination game seven. Right. So yeah, he's capable. And you know, we know who Kyrie is. And I don't care what the NBA rankings are, Kyrie is it. Like talent wise, Kyrie is as good as there is in the league. Is Kyrie as good as Luca? I mean, you I guess you gotta take it in consideration size and all that stuff, but Kyrie is it. You talking about talent, this ability, yo, I'm gonna put the ball in this guy's hands and it's last five minutes of a, a finals game seven. Mm-hmm. I trust him. And I'm not even basing that just off the shot he hit for Cleveland when they won the chip. I'm basing it off just his skill set. It's okay. That's fair. Well, I'll I'll remind you though, with that talent comes a lot of uh a lot of uncertainty. And I'm not just talking about I, I'm talking about in terms of uh the uncertainty has come from availability. The uncertainty has come from uh camaraderie and morale i agree with that part uh you you know that there's, there's been we, we all know about the drama in, in brooklyn uh and not just with the uh with the with the with the twitter remarks and you know they claim anti-semitism and, and all that which was fake which it, it, it was fake rage i agree with that one i think all they went stuff overboard. That- in regards to how we judge Kyrie and this, this, the nonsense, wherever he brings to the table, mm-hmm. outside of the camaraderie part, like he's not one of those guys. This guy's the type dude where you know, like the stories of him in Cleveland, where he I ain't ta- he ain't talking to teammates for months. That's weird. That's so you got to have a, a a leader on board already to have those that camaraderie spark type stuff already in place, but. The other stuff, the availability, what superstar ain't got availability issues? These All these guys are injury prone. I don't think you can name, you go through the top 10 players in the league, most of them have injury concerns. Yeah. Outside of but, that, Kyrie, Kyrie is a hooper. Yeah. Outside he, of he's that. He's a hooper, yeah. And you're right. Superstars do have injury issues. I, I'm not arguing with you there. Well, I will, uh, you know, uh, I'll, I'll counter with that Kyrie's issue isn't physical. Kyrie has had no call, no shows. Kyrie right. has said, I'm not playing just because. And then you'll see footage of him dancing at somebody's party. <laughs> yeah, Yo, you get everything that happens. Don't count. Oh my God. That's, that's a quarter that is quarter there. number one. I, I think I won. Um, uh, nah, is the score. The score is uh, <laughs> Isley. I'm home. I'm home team. By the way, the score is <laughs> one one nothing. <laughs> just one. Yeah, yeah, just one. <laughs> one Isley. One. Uh, yeah, just keep him as visitor. <laughs> yeah, zero. Now nah, you can change it to Ray. <laughs> That's quarter number one down. Uh, quarter number two, we're going to talk about contenders in both the East and the West. We're going to start. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to go out West. I like going out West. Uh, as as people, some people may know from um, previous shows that I've been on, I'm a I'm a devout Lakers fan, ride or die. Uh, my dude that's here with me, my guy, my co-host, he's a Lakers fan for now. I'm a Brian fan. <laughs> yeah. Wherever Brian, Wherever Brian, Brian that's goes, that's where this guy goes. 
I, I respect it. You know, there's a lot of people these days who are fans of the game, but more fans of individual players and where that individual goes, their their fanship and their loyalty follows. I got I don't I don't have a problem with that. But me, I was I've been a Lakers fan before LeBron. I'll be a Lakers fan after LeBron, and I'll be a Lakers fan when they when they either cremate me or put me six feet deep in dirt. <laughs> my <laughs> my casket might be a Lakers, you know what I mean? But uh, let's start. Let's start with them. Let's let's start with the. We haven't we haven't spoken about the Lakers yet. Um, Lakers had a hell of an off season. They did a great job. Uh, I would give them a a, a grade of a of an A minus. I don't know if you if if you're with that. I like every I like everything they did. You know, they added depth. I think they got a good overall team, and I think they got every they added shooting, which I don't think they had since LeBron's been there. And I think that with the pieces that they added, you you got Reed coming back. He's going to be better. He looks better from what I seen in the preseason. I mean, my expectation for them, I mean, like with most of the teams, is health. If they're healthy, bronze healthy, 80s healthy, and they bring in everything they got, I expect them to have a say in who comes out of the uh, Western Conference. I think they got one piece that they – I'm not a big D-Lo guy, and I think they should – Can you elaborate on that? I mean, I, I mean, the playoffs, when you got a guy who makes what he makes and you trade for him, he shouldn't be sitting on the bench in the fourth quarter. You shouldn't be closing games out. And he's not on the floor. Like he looked completely out of it. The Golden State series, he looked out of it. Denver, he almost was unplayable. So, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I think he's going to have a, a strong regular season. But I think when the chips is on the table and you got to go see the Phoenixes and you got to go see Denver again, the team that you're going to have to go through to get out of the Western Conference, I don't know what he's going to bring to the table. So, you know, because I'm a Lakers fan, by association with Brian, yeah, I know that they had this other first round pick. I need to piece that thing together and move off of him. Like I wish they, they can't had... move him until December, right? If they wanted to, right? That's why they couldn't get the holiday talks. Because if they could have added holiday, because would be my favorites with everything. They would if the Lakers if if D'Lo's uh, contract was it held up. And he couldn't move him until December, and we would have been in the holiday Sweet sweepstakes States, right. and, and grabbed holiday. You're putting the Lakers as a perennial overall favorite to win the championship. If they had Drew Holiday at the one, they win it all. See, I don't know about that because as much as we both love Drew Holiday, and he is a factor, he's a huge factor in Boston. And he <laughs> That's probably why I put them over the top as a favorite. But in L.A., the dynamic would have been a little different because, yes, Drew gives you both ends. He's great on both ends. He's an upgrade from D'Angelo Russell. Uh, But A.D. has to be the guy for the Lakers to win. I don't think how no matter no matter if Drew Holiday or D'Lo is at the point, A.D. still has to be the guy for the Lakers to win it all. 80, I think the definition of 80 being a guy is different. 80 is not a natural, I'm going to go get you 30, 40 every single night. That's not who he is. Mm-hmm. He has a talent on days where he will give you that, where the ball, where his shot's falling. But 80 is going to give you everything. He's going to play incredible defense. Like, I don't care what no, nobody says. That's the best defensive player in the league. Ooh. And it's a he, bold statement. he's going to give you 20. He gonna give you 10, 15 rebounds, and he's capable of scoring the ball. So I don't think if you put going to a playoff series and you're saying that, all right, only way we're gonna get out of here is AD gives us 30, you ain't gonna get out of there. He ain't giving you 30 every night. Yeah. That's not who he is. That's not his, that's not his personality. He's an emotional roller coaster. But if you tell me you got holiday, you got Brian, you got Reeves, you got all of these pieces, mm-hmm. you got enough. You got enough to get out of there. Because Holiday can play. I think Holiday people are under is. people talk about the defense, which is great. The boy can put the ball in the hole. I read something where somebody said uh he's the most underplay underrated player of this era. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to air. Yeah. Like we go, yeah, yeah, yeah. going a little crazy right now. <laughs> <laughs> of the well, era. well, just look, but play. just look at it though. I mean, look how 
crazy people went when 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 they found out Holiday was on the market, when Holiday was being shipped or right. or in talks to be shipped. People was going crazy, and every potential team where they said if Holiday goes there, they're the favorite. I mean, same thing with Dame. Uh, they it was said that if Dame goes to Miami, Miami's the favorite. See, I mean, I, I, I'm gonna say this right. We we talking about, and I and I, I know I just said Milwaukee was my favorite to come out the East, right? Mm-hmm. But I think you get Dame and, and Dame and, and uh. And holiday, right? So you right. you get rid of one to add the other, right? Yeah. I don't know how much better Milwaukee really got because the discrepancy between what they are on a defensive side and the it's discrepancy on the offensive side, Holiday can play. Like he is not Dame. Like Dame is a killer. Dame is one of the best offensive players we've seen in a long time. The ball uh, of, of an era. <laughs> the boy can put the ball in the hole, right? <laughs> I ain't want OD with him. But <laughs> no, no, no. We listen. We just saw. We just see dude put, have a seventy-one. I'm just saying. I know people. Love, if somebody does something great, and it's just, oh, he, he's gonna be Wimby's gonna be an all-time great man. Let's let's wait. Let's I, wait I have, a little bit. I have my uh, Wimby take. I do have a Wimby take. Uh, but you, you, where where do you find best case scenario for Lakers is championship. Best case is championship. Worst, Worst case, case is second round. Second round out. Okay. Best case for me, I agree with you. Best case is championship. Worst case is playing Whoa. and not Whoa. making the playoffs. Well, because here's some the thing. more injuries then, right? It, that's where, that's when, where I'm when, going when to. When we have these discussions, we got to throw injuries out because injuries is a, a factor – Everybody, I mean, I know everybody always associates those with AD and Bron because yeah, he's yeah, older, yeah. right? But KD's probably played less basketball than than Bron. Agreed. You know what I mean? Bradley Bill has been injury prone. Booker, I mean, you go across the league, yeah. Everybody, for the most part, is injury prone. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. think you can't just associate with that with the Lakers. I think you you could associate with everybody because whatever you think of AD. You should probably think the same thing, a, a KD, book, and all these other guys as Agreed. well. Shoot, K, KD got hurt in the layup line. Right. Of course, he's injury prone. <laughs> right. But here's this is why I'm saying it, it I, I'm 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 using it in a literal sense. That that is the worst case. Both of them being hurt out of the lineup, and the Lakers are a mediocre ball club. Well, I'm I'm thinking when I when I throw my expectations, I'm thinking of they're healthy. And okay. What's the worst case scenario if this is the healthy Lakers team? Worst case worst... scenario, still healthy right. is, is where you're gauging it from. Right. I'm literally saying worst case scenario. Oh, well, well, you know what well, I mean? That's the worst case for every. I mean, even the best team, whoever, whoever you, Denver, the best team in the basketball, their worst case is uh, big man gets hurt or Murray gets hurt and yeah. they miss the playoffs. That, that's, well, that's everybody then. But hey, any team you that's gonna be but, the worst case. Yeah, t- the Bulls' worst case is they might get trash and, right. and, and not miss their best case is not championship. Right. Can I we agree, agree on yeah, that? Absolutely. So it's a little different. When we talk about the contenders, the their best case is championship. They're at their worst case, and I mean, I'm we've seen it. We, we went 21-22. The Lakers missed the playoffs. That wasn't injury. That was just that wasn't trash. injury. They was they just suck. Right. They 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 brought the team together with no shooting, uh, a turnover crazy point guard, and it it it, it all went to hell. But with this, everything everything Bron needs, he has. He has shooting. He has a defensive presence. He has a dog of a coach that 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 galvanizes and rallies the team to his calls and they bought into what Darvin Ham wants them to do. The question mark is he still Brian? That's the question mark because come on I, man. I, I'm a I'm one of the biggest Brian fans. At in times, the playoffs outside of game four, that wasn't Brian. That was LeBron. That wasn't Brian. Okay, and, and maybe he was still hurt. <laughs> that was he LeBron. You got to <laughs> add that the, the, the L E. <laughs> yeah, you got to throw that in. There. Yo, like he 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 was hurt. He he rushed himself back to be available for the team, and he was still a quality version of mm-hmm. him, so better than many others. But that wasn't Bron, and 
if we get Brian back, and I'm not talking about Brian from Cleveland or nothing like that. If we get Brian, we saw early last year in the regular season where he was averaging 29 a game. We get him back. Okay. We're a threat. Where's we're not Phoenix? the favorite, but we're a threat. Where's Phoenix? In your They're mind? a threat. It's just a matter of what it all looks like. There's so many factors. When you talk about who's going to be as is, we're not talking about because you got the buyout market and all this stuff that's going to yeah. come into play later on. Right now, this what they bring into the table, they got a lot of firepower. Reminds me of what they had in Brooklyn, but they seem like they guys guys who want to play basketball and will be available. They're going to score the ball. It's just going to be a matter of can they defend, can they rebound? Because, I mean, the regular season is going to be the regular season. When the playoffs mm-hmm. come in and the game slows down and you got to grind out possessions and you got to get rebounds, you got to get a little dirty. I don't know if they got enough people that can get dirty and go win games. Yeah, and they got people who get hurt before the game even starts. And KD don't win when 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 it's not in the bag. When it's not in the bag, he's not winning. So he tried to get it in the bag when, by getting yeah. Bill over there. But <laughs> yeah, 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 look yeah, across yeah. the league and they are on par with the best teams. And right. I ain't seeing him win in that scenario. When K when KD is with the Justice League, <laughs> right. it's okay. When KD's with the Justice Society, <laughs> not, not so much. This guy doesn't win as the guy. So, it, it, which leads me to my next, is he the guy on this team? Or is, he is it both? the best player? Yes. Is he, that's why I worded Will it he the be way the I guy? worded it. Is he the guy? He won't be the guy. And I think, I think it's because of how good he is. Like, if I'm going to a player, and I'm the Los Angeles Lakers, we're going into a playoff series. Mm-hmm. I'm not letting KD beat me. I'm going to say book. Um, Bill, have at it. You know what I mean? I'm a double KD, which most teams are going to do. They're not going to let him be the one to go get 40-50. It's going to be book. Okay. That's what they were doing last year. That's why book was killing because of <clears throat> coverage. So real quick, before we go to uh, third quarter, uh, we spent a lot of time on the West. Real quick, who's your Eastern Conference pick? Milwaukee. Milwaukee. So you got Milwaukee and L.A.? Milwaukee, L.A. L.A. and six. Oh, oh man. The camera. L.A. and six. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I got L.A., Boston. That's a homer. That's homer, man. You you, you got L.A. coming out? No, I told you I at got the top LA of the coming show. Because I'm a Brian guy. I, got, I told I you at the top of the show. Out. I'm a Brian guy. I'm a Lakers guy. I think the Boston Celtics are the best constructed team on paper in basketball right now. They got everything covered, offensively and defensively. Lacking depth, and they ain't got they ain't got Giannis. They ain't got they ain't got Giannis. They they don't have Giannis. I. I Think what will be the, the I'm, and I and, and I told you this in the text messages a couple of days ago. You said I was tripping because it was preseason. I think uh, Przingis is going to show everybody what they forgot he is a seven three problem, and he's at the he third option now. Sweet, sweet. He, and he have that on record. Neil. Grab it. On he, record. Said he, he said that. He said that. Sweet, and the, he's going to be matched up with Bobby Portis who is a dog, and Bobby Porter is going to not expose him, but you will not see this unicorn that you speak of. <laughs> you're going to be very disappointed listen, listen to if me. you're basing that series off of I'm not Porzingis basing off him. Getting him over the I'm top. I'm saying he can get busy and be the reason, and be the Sweet. difference. Why they went. I, was, I saw him in Dallas giving Kawhi and PG work. He, he had was a part of the reason. He had a matchup. He don't have a matchup. You, you think have, Bobby Portis will completely take him out I'm of the game? Saying, nobody takes nobody nowhere. That, that's not how the league is set up. Okay. No Bobby, Portis, Bobby Portis is physical. He is a dog. He going to be barking at him. And Przingis is not going to show up the way you expect him to. He will have quite solid games at times. But he is not going to be the difference maker. Now. It's going to come down to Tatum and Brown versus Giannis and Dame. And I'm going with Giannis. Okay, that's fair. I, I, uh, he, uh, you, you already got the point up. You you think he won the damn <laughs> yeah, quarter. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to go with you, me. <laughs> I, 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 for real, for real, it's 2-0. You are keeping the buck. It's 2-0 me. You are keeping the thousand. 
You want to keep it a buck. Neil already, I've looked up the scoreboard. What the heck? He already got the point up. Listen, man, your name on the bottom of the joint, so he had to give you a point off top. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and by the end of the third quarter, I look I look at the screen and it's high IQ basketball with Raymond Bird. <laughs> like, what's going on out here? We are going to change that though. It's going to be with Brian Osley and Raymond Bird. We, we, are to, we definitely are going to change that. Uh it, it, it's halftime. And um like my like like uh our contemporaries in 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 the podcast game, million dollars worth of game, Gilly once said, uh, and I quote <laughs> Talk crazy to him. Dude. Talk crazy to him, right? <laughs> if you if you if you can't you can't say in your podcast that this episode of high IQ basketball has been brought to you by, then you need to shut your mouth. <laughs> Yo, NBA panel. <laughs> nah, chill, 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 chill. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Do you do, do your commercial, B. The thoughts of Raymond Bird do not necessarily <laughs> reflect, reflect the on thoughts the of Brian it don't, it Isley. Don't, don't. <laughs> High IQ basketball. Uh, this is halftime, and halftime is sponsored by If You Know, You Know Trivia Games. This is a trivia game uh created by a great friend of mine and uh friend to the show. Saquon Gallette, uh, if you know, you know, is a 90s to 2020s hip hop and R&B trivia game is created by Saquon Gallette. As I said, it's Star Corner Productions, Star Corner Games. And it's the game you never knew you needed. Guaranteed to have you singing, dancing, laughing and reminiscing. You'll probably learn something, too, in the most fun way ever is for ages 13 and up. Because you know with hip hop we have explicit <laughs> we have explicit lyrics. But yeah, if you know, you know trivia game, uh get it on Amazon and wherever uh games are sold. That is our halftime sponsor. Shout out to Dreads, uh I'm Saquon. Go, I'm grabbing the, I wish I'd have knew I'd have, I'm gonna grab me one. Oh, I got I I, I I'm a um I'm a, I'm also an ambassador for the game, <laughs> and, and and I sell the games hand to hand. Yeah, I'm a grad one. Shout, shout out to Dreads. You know what I'm saying? If you know, you do, Neil is a, the greatest producer of all time, bro. <laughs> man, this guy, man, 1999. <laughs> this guy got the he got the if you know you know games up on the screen. Y'all can see it for advertising. You can you can grab that at Amazon 1999 man if you know you know and that is our halftime sponsor shout out to Saquon Gillette and Star Corner Productions uh halftime is now over and we're going to get into a uh, very interesting topic the ESPN just released their top 100 we're not going to do the whole 100 cuz we don't <laughs> you, <laughs> you got flashback, right? <laughs> Keep the top 31 teams, right? Standings, <laughs> scores from last night's game. Like, okay. but, but anyway, I digress. <laughs> we are going to uh, talk about the ESPN top 10 player rankings. We're not going to go over the whole 100, just the 10. And the 10 are as follows. I'm going from 10 to 1. 10 is Anthony Davis. Uh, nine is LeBron James. Eight is Shea Gildress Alexander. Seven is uh, Kevin Durant. Six is Jason Tatum. Five is Stephen Curry. Four is Luka Doncic. Three is Joel Embiid. Two, Nikola Jokic. And one, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Thoughts, theories. Who with the top four? Concerns. No questions with the cool top with the four. the top four? Uh, in order. I'm cool. Yeah, in order. I'm fine with those four. I ain't got no argument there. And those four, one is Giannis, two, Joker, three, Embiid, four, Luca. You can swap one and two. Boy did, but he did Joker did just win the chip. You know what I mean? You could I would move him to one, but I'm not mad at Giannis being number one. I mean, he brings it on both sides of the ball. Yeah. But uh Braun should be higher. And I'm not even saying it because I'm just a fan. I'm a fan, but I yeah. think that's a part of the reason why you're saying it. SGA like, is not a better basketball player at this point in his life than LeBron James. LeBron James, regardless of what you want to say, like they were in the play-in and somehow they found themselves in the conference finals. And I think a lot of people thought that they had a legit chance of knocking yeah. Denver off and getting to the finals. Like they had a, a legit chance at winning a chip from the play-in. So 
LeBron should be higher. AD should be higher. I think AD, people don't give AD the respect he does because he deserves because, you know, they associate, oh, he's fragile. He misses games. AD mm. hooped. That's and not the main reason, bro. The, the reason they got to the conference finals was because of him. He and, spearheaded that yes. run. And then, then he had a 40-point game one and an 11-point game two, correct? Okay, I'm not saying he should be higher than Joker. He's very, I'm not saying he should be number one. I didn't one. say that. I'm, I'm just saying, saying he his shouldn't inconsistent, be 10. His, his inconsistencies are the reason why people ranked him 10. I, Me personally, me honestly, I didn't, when, when it came out, I didn't think he was going to be in the top 10. Not that I don't have him in my personal top 10. I just thought the media would be so hell-bent on this guy is street clothes, and then when he does play, he's inconsistent, and that was going to keep him out of the top 10. Bron, it is what it is with Bron because age, you, age and uh, mileage and all that stuff, and quiet is kept on the low. I don't think it's really on the low, but on the low, they kind of want my boy up out of here. They want him up out of here, but he should be... Bron should probably if if KD is seven, Bron should be higher than KD. I don't care. It's K, KD lost in the first round with Book as his sidekick. Bron got AD as a sidekick, and I think it he was, was the, the AC. I think it was the second, the second round. round? Second, second round. Second, second round. round. Bron got to the conference finals. I don't know. Yeah, Bron got further at the end of the day. Bron should be higher, and he and when you go to the regular season numbers. The numbers were probably on par. And I think Bron made all league. I think KD didn't make all league. Right. Because of right. Right. Or whatever. I, so I don't see how Bron could be lower than KD. I did but, you say KD? I don't see how Bron is lower than Steph. When when LeBron Steph's better. Bron's a better overall basketball player, but at this point in their career, and I'm not a Steph guy. Steph's effect on it on for the Golden State Warriors on the his effect on winning and losing at this point is higher than what Bron's is. And because I was like that I because said, AD is there. Is it or because do you just think Steph is the better or or the more of a threat? I I think he's more of a threat. He's is like he, I was in that that series against Golden State. I'm watching the games and I'm I'm scared of Steph. Never at no point in time when he when we were when Brown was in Cleveland and we was facing him in the finals every I was not afraid of Steph like that. Mm. This version of him. I was afraid that this guy was going to go for 50 at any point in time. Why? Because he did it to Sacramento in because Game 7? Because he's like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I hate to say I'm not a Steph guy. The boy is like that. He is like that. No, no, I'm not. He I'm is not like that in that his part. effect on the, the game of basketball for in regards to winning for Golden State and Bron's effect for the Lakers. Don't give me Bron is super important for what the Lakers and what they hope to get done. But Steph's is just higher, so I, I'm fine with him being a because little bit Steph higher. is the guy. Steph is the number one option on his team. I think at this point in Bron's career, year 21, age that he's he's now since Iggy officially retired, he's now the oldest player in the league. The fact that we're even having a, a discussion between it's now, a, now granted, him. it's a credit to him. I agree. It's a credit to him. Now, granted, Steph is also 35. That's hard to believe, right? Right. In year what 15. But with stuff, does it? It's last, it's gonna last for even longer. It's gonna last because he can shoot the basketball. We've talked about this a lot, especially since the game has transitioned and stepped further out past the three point line. You and I have always been of the mindset that if you can shoot the ball, you're going to have a job in, right. the, in the league. If you can shoot the ball, you're going you're you're going to play in, in the league. And shooting a ball has changed the game. Steph has changed the game. Now you got you got guard people past half court, which is insane when you talk about it as far as <laughs> NBA terms. That's high school stuff, right? You dig what I'm saying? We right. there was a there was a guy that you faced in your prime in high school that you had to John, John Crispin right. that you had to guard past half court. But that's high school. Once once you go to a different level from high school to college to the NBA, it filters out. It's not supposed to be that way. What we're seeing from Steph and Dame and sometimes Bron when he turns into logo Bron, we we weren't supposed to see any of that. Right. You know what I mean? That's high school showmanship. Right, right. I'm the guy and 
I can shoot. I can shoot anytime I want, anywhere I want. Right. That's ultimate green light high school stuff. That's Wag and Camden stuff. Right. Right. You dig what I'm saying? That wasn't supposed to happen. So a credit to Steph Curry for completely changing the game that way, and it makes um people in the NBA are so awesomely talented that you can't stop anybody, right? You can't stop anybody offensively. Of course, there's tears. Right. But with, with Steph, it's, it's, it's like, oh, like, he, he can, and, and Clay too, at times. Like, man, it's, there's nothing you is there's nothing you could do to defend that if Draymond or at the t- or when when Bogut was there or 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 whoever if they set a solid screen and you get open, it's cash. Because it's, it's it, not it, about beating you. Like it's not old Bron versus KD. I got the ball. You're guarding me. Let mm-hmm. me beat you. It's not that. It is. It's past. You can have your whoever your best defender is, and you right. can say we have a plan for stopping Steph Curry. It's not your plan isn't based upon one guy guarding Steph Curry because by the time Steph touched the basketball, mm-hmm. that person is guarding somebody completely different, and Steph has come off of five screens and he's caught the ball in the corner and now he's shooting. You know what I mean? Like yeah, that's, that's, and that's while basketball. that screen action is happening, the ball is still moving. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you have to account for everything. On top of that, Clay is is a top five, top ten shooter all time as well. So you have to account for everything. They change the game, and I hate them. <laughs> they, they they definitely change the game, but I don't think I don't think Steph is better than LeBron, even still today. I don't I think don't. he's better because I think Bron does a plethora of things, a but ple- a plethora, a plethora. Has a? Plethora of things. <laughs> but his effect on winning, like you walk into a ball game, you're like, shit, this guy might give me 50 tonight. And he is capable of hitting shots. Yeah. You could do everything right. Right. And he still hits the 30 footer. You know still what I mean? The, that's you, what you I'm could, saying. You could like, be in his hip and he still hits the incredible yeah, shots. That's what I'm so, saying. When people that's complain what about lack of defense in the league, you heard the complaints. We see complaints on our timeline all the time. It ain't the same. Basketball is soft, blah blah blah. These cats it is don't soft. play defense. It is. Soft. No, these cats can't play defense because these dudes are too supremely skilled and know. they shoot the leather off the basketball. I agree. And it extends. I the, agree. The floor is so spread. You cannot defend. You can't defend. You can't physically defend this skill set and this shooting at this level. So what changes in the playoffs? It gets more physical. They No, so my point is that the refer- the officiating changes when the playoffs start. In the regular season, they don't allow you to touch people. They don't allow you to, you know, they allow a lot of stuff that's going to favor the offensive side, offensive mm-hmm. player. So that's why you get, you know, guys going crazy in the, all, in, the, in the regular season. But then when the playoffs start, things change. Even Steph changes in the playoffs. Yeah. So mm, yeah, we've seen Steph have the some incredible lose in the playoffs because they are allow- allowing a different level of physicality. So we've seen KD, who some people think is the greatest offensive weapon ever. That's Cap. Play against Boston and, and get that physicality brought to him and him crumble. So yeah, you can defend. It's just the I also seen KD get that physical beat him up defense from PJ Tucker, and he was a a foot away from sending Milwaukee home. Facts, but he didn't. He didn't. So it don't matter. It don't matter. Yeah, but you, you know, I you know, you you know, know I'm on the mountain. Excuse me for being a a <laughs> stickler for detail and context. Yeah. You climb the mountain or you don't climb the mountain. That's no, that's see, see, to. see, that's not that's bad. We don't do that here at, <laughs> at IQ. We it, it ain't just the end result. We speak about nuance and and context. We and we're big on that. You know that, right? I, I, listen, in that particular situation. You climb the mountain or you don't climb the mountain. That's what it comes down to. You still had overtime. I don't think that's fair. If you bro. him, you had you still played an overtime period. I don't where think you, that's you fair. You could bring that Kyrie home. Kyrie wasn't there. Uh, Harden was hurt. <clears throat> Listen, I agree with all of those things. 
you had a you had an opportunity on your hands. You had an opportunity post mm. Golden State to stamp yourself. Is is it and safe? You failed. Is it safe to? Okay, I, that's fair. Is it safe to say that because we said KD is not the guy? He's never been the guy as far as mentality. He ain't stamped. He ain't stamped as the guy. Is it safe to say that in that moment? that that was the closest he's ever been to being the guy when the chips are down and you don't have an all-star cast around you. That was the best I've seen. That Those, what was that game five, six, five? Was it game five? Was it game five where he played the full 40 minutes? That was, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, full, full 40, yeah. Let me throw my boy, Brian does this all the time, right? We don't want to give him, we don't give Brian credit for it. Brian yeah. does this. All this we see okay. Brian do this on the highest level. Play you go to final series against Golden State and Brian, they have a stat where Brian sat eight minutes the entire series. You know what I mean? And, he and does, people take in that, that moment, with a grain of salt. He did, he looked special. He, he looked, looked special. like him. That's what I'm as saying. As great as Giannis was, KD was better. Word. And they lost. And I and I will say in that moment, KD was a better basketball player than Giannis. That's all I wanted. That's all I wanted to know. But you didn't climb them out, <laughs> and you not stand. You still say uh, you agree with everything I just said to you, and then at the end of the day, you still circle Let's back say, and got, say you didn't climb them out. Them to the same standard, and that you they hold know, Ron to, and you know I'm not. A, I was a KD guy. He was supposed to be my replacement when Kobe retired. R.I.P. Black Mamba. He was supposed to be the guy. Then he did that that f boy stuff and went to Golden State after Golden State beaten him after he was up 3-1. Weak. Weakest move Weak. ever in the history of the NBA. I, he can't be my replacement now. So it feels it feels weird for me defending him now. But I'm telling you in that moment, he was the guy. That was the best version of KD. That playoff series right there, that was the best him I saw, I've, I've seen of him as a basketball player. Like If he had got, got that done, they probably win it all. And we we ain't just talking about skill set because throughout KD's career we've seen him go to work. He can play. He right? can play. He, he can, boy can play. We're He's talking certified. about in terms, you know, if you, if you guys don't get it and you, you're listening, like, what are you guys talking about? We're talking about in terms of him being the dog. His his mentality was, I'm the guy. Put this team on my back, and we're going to go as far as I take them. He, he runs. It's from rare it. that we see that he runs from it and he gets a pass for not accepting that responsibility as being one of the elite players that we've ever seen in this game. He runs from that more than anybody we've ever seen at that elite level. There's and no that's reason facts. that he still he should still be in Brooklyn grinding right now. Facts. It's no way. It's no. He had no reason to leave. Like th those were your boys. You begged for them to come over. You can't be mad at the organization. They did everything that you asked them to do. You supposed to grind that out with them. And oh. they had the pieces to go get you guys to put a quality team around you and you to go get that thing done. And you put yourself in a position where that question mark around is KD him is always going, you're going to end your career that way. Because even if y'all win this year, you still not going to be stamped. Got you. Uh, unless you just go, unless you go crazy. Unless you have just a moment against one of these great teams that the Boston or, or Milwaukee in the finals where you just go crazy. Yeah. But it looked like from what I saw last year in the play, it looked like this is books team. Right. Agreed. Uh so is it safe to say that Kawhi is not injured all of last season pretty much? Safe to say he cracks his top 10 and SGA is not in there, right? Ka Kawhi is so hard to judge because I seen him last year when they played against Phoenix and Kawhi looked like the best player in the league. Kawhi has that, like that, you talk about highs and lows. He's always injured. He never plays. He's always absent when you need him the most. But when you put the chips on the table and he's healthy, he's he's tough to deal with. And he brings it on both sides. He's not as, as good a defender as he was in his prime. And he's, he's top notch. Like, yo, if you say, uh, you got to take you in the gym and we we at the Elks home and I got captain, you got captain. I ain't picking SGA over Kawhi. 
uh, for for those not in the know, the Elks home is a legendary outside court in our hometown where uh, we we dominated for a better part of. Uh, I'm the all time lead. I know a lot of people. <laughs> You're not home. the all time leader score at the Elks. Is going this to be is listening ca- to oh this. my god! Know, wait, let me wait, this... camera. Let me the camera. Hold, chill, chill, chill. <laughs> I know a lot of people from home. The TJs and all these people will be home watching this episode. I am the all-time lead scorer at the Elks, and I got the most bodies. I got I, I got my camera now, and I'm going to tell you that is, you know, I'm trying to refrain from using profanity these days. That is bullshit. That is you know, I got the most. You was there for a lot of bodies. I was bodies. there for all. I was there for all of it. I got a lot it. of bodies out there, and I, I got a lot of points <laughs> out there. And I might be the all-time leading scorer. You the now, Elks. now you might be the all-time leading scorer. No, no, no. I might be the all-time leading scorer at center as well. You're not. A lot of work was put in there, baby. Another Not legendary spot in our hometown of Salem, New Jersey, the community center, also known as the center, where we had some of the best games we ever had in our lives, pickup wise. Uh no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not the all-time leader scorer uh, at the Elks nor the center. It's yeah, yo, cap. we have to ask the, the scorekeeper Squirm. And if Squirm we'll say ask I you. am. Yo, you if know Squirm what? Say I am. I am. We're gonna we're gonna bring him up on the show. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna have him on the show. We, whether whether it's, it's live, be top. It got, it's gotta be a lot of Nick Top. <laughs> well, you're right. Whether it's live or whether it's via StreamYard, we're gonna have uh Jamil Foreman, aka Squirm, on the show to verify. If this guy was the leading scorer, get the hell, get out of here, bro. I now, definitely got a real claim for the Elks, and I and I got a hell of a claim for the center. Ain't nobody play more ball than me. All right, you know, if you do have a claim for the Elks, it's and it, 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna go the LeBron detractor route with this. If you do, if you are the all time leading scorer at the Elks, it's longevity. But you was at the Elks more than anybody, <laughs> so by default. <laughs> by default you are the all-time leader scorer because you was out there at the crack of dawn until sunset so if you're counting the, the points that you scored during shoot around <laughs> on to the next topic and now you <laughs> on to the next topic. <laughs> you ain't trying to hear it now huh <laughs> that was uh so so you you got you got Gian, you cool with Giannis being number one I mean, Giannis is a joker. I'm, I'm cool with Giannis. Being there. I think you you give it to Joker by default. He won a chip, and he's a great player. Okay. And it's it's debatable. All right, so this is our uh, this is the fourth quarter, in uh you know crunch time, if you will. We're going to talk about uh, I believe we're going to talk about the goat. Uh, we're going to establish our goat opinion, and Neil, you can chime in on this too as well. Matter of fact, we'll start with you. Who is your greatest? Of all time, I mean, for, I'm a big uh, the big guys for me was always I was always looking up to like, uh, I mean, but the, they were just talking about this. LeBron I just had a whole fight with somebody. You, know, you had a whole all right. whole thing. Over, they were just arguing at the table, just uh, LeBron or Jordan, like just back and forth. Yeah, the comedian Jay Reed out of uh, Las Vegas. Okay, he was LeBron all day. I like Jay Reed. He was LeBron. He was just <laughs> like, it's just, it's just he just was LeBron all day, and I had trouble not. Not refuting it. And then the other side of the table was just MJ all day. Just Michael Jordan. Now, let me ask you a question. During this debate, who was making more logical sense? Yeah, Jay Reed. Jay Reed made a <laughs> lot of good points. It's always... Let me let me look. I, this is my time to look at the camera now. The LeBron James people who the, that, that say LeBron James is the GOAT, we have to be more articulate and we have to have more value, valid points to have our points sustained and, and win the debate. Most Jordan fans, stands, Jordashians, if you will, will just jump right to the 6 and 0. Oh. And I'm pretty sure that's what this guy was doing during the debate with uh, Jay Reed. I bet you Jay Reed came up with a plethora. <laughs> of, of valid points for LeBron, yep. correct? While the one dude just staying on the six and zero. Oh. The only thing I, the other, what he would stand on was uh, 
Michael Jordan had ice in his veins. When when it's time to show, like in, you know, in the in that moments, it's like that ice in his Cliched veins argument. Shade yep. ESPN drivel. <laughs> That's what that is. He took that fresh off of first take. <laughs> Clutch ice, ice in your veins. That has nothing to do with basketball and what you've done on the court. My ice in his veins. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mind you, the, the 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 ice in the veins, the clutch and all that, the clutch gene and all that stuff, is it, implying that Michael Jordan is the most clutch player of all time. He is not. It is LeBron James, and uh, I'm 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 sorry, but like I said, LeBron James fans are more likely to go into facts and figures to support our claim that LeBron James is the most clutch basketball player of all time, more so than Jordan, more so than Kobe, and the numbers don't lie. He has the most clutch points, the most game winners in NBA regular season and playoff history. I think it's because, especially with the game winners, it's how they look. Right, mm-hmm. it, it's it's prettier when you cross somebody where at the free throw line and you hit a jumper and you lead the you lead the uh, uh you lead the, the, the L up there, you yeah. the gooseneck up there, and you, yeah. and you walk off. Right, it's prettier than you. Well, Brian did against uh Pacers years back when he hit the game winner. It was a game one where he back cut Paul George real quick and got layup. the layup for game. It's pretty. It was it's still a game winning shot, mm-hmm. but the jumper's prettier. The jumper is prettier, but. That's but, fine. I, mean, I, I think Brown is one of those people where you know is is if he shoots the jumper and he misses it, why didn't he go to the rim? Why didn't he go get the money? Don't go on everybody. He was scared to go through the free throw line. If he goes to the rim and gets the layup, you know we don't want to give him credit. I remember times when he had clutch shots and Stephen A. will come on the show the next day and be like, "It was luck." You know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> it don't count. He only hit it because of this. You know what I mean? Oh, it was Toronto. That's why he did that. You know, they're scared of him. Like, they come up with these different scenarios to take credit away from when Brian does something incredible. By the way, Stephen A's fit game is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him at the Liberty Aces game. Jesus. I'm about to start wearing suits here for now. Do, right? do, I'm about to start wearing suits. Oh, so I can look oh, apart. Are we bringing back oversized fitted caps now? <laughs> That's what we know. I thought fitted caps were supposed to fit. <laughs> Look like Gilly's uh, fitted gear. On his <laughs> <Yeah. door. laughs> Gilly on sports, that yeah. big hat that he wear, that it did look like that. That's crazy. Uh, but let me get yeah. my goat. Let Go me ahead. Get my goat. Go ahead, sir. Of course, mine's is Brian. And my reasons why, like I know most Jordan fans is going, their biggest argument is he's 6 0. He's not 6 0. He played, what did he play? 15, 16? 15 years. 15 years. That means that he was really six and nine because there was nine other years where he didn't win that's, at all. That's good math. Bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and a- Bron, I mean, because I think Bron, sometimes you winning is a team thing. We can go back to Mike and say, the first year Mike retired, they didn't replace Mike with anything. I think that, I think they promoted- Pete Myers. Pete Myers, and I think they brought Tony up. Tony Kukoc came up. Yeah. And they immediately won 50. So I think they won 55 games. 55 games. They went to game seven against uh, New York. And it was a bad call on Scotty on a Hubert Davis 15 footer. And Chicago's going back to the finals because whoever was going to face uh, Atlanta in the next round was going to smoke them. Right. Word. Fe- and New York went game seven against Houston. So, you know, I mean, who knows how Chicago would have fared against Houston, mm-hmm. you know, but. I think they would have got back to the final. Maybe that changed people's opinion. I'm just saying that Ch- Chicago was a great team with or without Mike. And don't get me wrong, I'm not taking away from Mike like he was in the driving force behind them winning championship. Mm-hmm. Mike is incredible. And you don't have to talk crazy about one to get the other credit. Mike Facts. is an incredible basketball player. And it's like Stephen, they say all, all the time about Brian. So it's not wrong with him being number two. You know what I mean? Bron is the greatest basketball player I've ever seen. He's been able to do things with teams that have no business going to the finals, and he'll drag them to the finals. And they'll come up short because when you get to the finals, you're playing against the best of the best. Yeah. And teams find your weakness. They'll exploit the mismatches, you know. And they, so you might have got through round one, two, three, and you get to the finals, and you're playing against this other great team, and you come up short. We've seen Bron with Kyrie get hurt. Kevin Love get hurt, play against 
Golden State, the first Golden State chip, they were the number one ranked defensive team, the number one ranked offensive team. And all you had was Bron. And Matthew and Bron pushed them. Pushed them to six. Pushed you got Matthew Delabadova, who is a, 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 a wrong statement away from being out the league <laughs> as your second option. And Bron pushed them. I can, I've never seen no, a better basketball player than LeBron. I've seen, if you think Mike had higher highs. Maybe Mike at his peak was a 10, and maybe Bron's only a 9.8. Bron's been a 9.5 or better his entire career. Yeah, word. We seen Mike in Washington be a five. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, that's a little harsh. That's just that's saying, a little harsh. Bron, I, I, I actually like Washington, which is Mike, because he had a floor game. His floor game was clean, bro. Mike, if, if Bron is one, Mike is two. End of debate. Okay. I have different reasons, you know, uh, why I think LeBron is a GOAT that a lot of people don't really touch on. Uh, LeBron makes ordinary players look like max players. And they get the bag off of that. LeBron has gotten so many marginal players paid because he made them look like all-stars. Remember J.J. Hickson? I don't think you do, but I do. I remember at one point, the Cavaliers were trying to trade J.J. Hickson for prime MVP candidate Amari Stoudemire. That's how good J.J. Hickson was playing because he was playing with LeBron James. After he stopped playing with LeBron James, you never heard of J.J. Hickson <laughs> again. Uh, who else did he get paid? He got, he, did he get Mo Williams paid? Didn't he get uh, Ch Channing Fry paid? Chris, Tristan Thompson made, what, $94 million? And he, he was averaging 10 points and five rebounds? What you say Larry said? Ooh, Larry said about, what about uh never signing no uh LeBron teammates? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just oh yeah. <laughs> what what what's the stats for JJ Hickson, Neil? Because <laughs> so I wanted to see if I could pin down. I'm trying to look for stats over cool. like before. exactly nine point five and six point eight exactly. And wow. they backed out of the deal. Not Phoenix. The Cavs backed out of the JJ Hickson for Amari deal. Right. Because they thought J.J. Hickson was the guy because Bron made him look like a guy. Here's number, another reason why uh, I think LeBron is a GOAT. Before LeBron went back home to Cleveland, Cleveland was a lottery team every single year. And who was at the helm of that? Kyrie Irving. When LeBron came back to Cleveland, they went to four straight finals. The last finals they went to, Kyrie wasn't even there. He was gone. He was already in Boston. The, and they won a title. They won a title against the 73-9 and nine Golden State Warriors. LeBron James had Kyrie Irving as his second option. Kyrie has not won a damn thing before or since LeBron James. And at times, he could be a basket case. And LeBron James won with that. Are you kidding me? KD hasn't won with that. Luka isn't going to win with that. LeBron James won a championship. The only championship in Cleveland history, which is equivalent to like five or six championships <laughs> anywhere else. And LeBron James got it done in Cleveland. Here's another reason why I think LeBron James is the GOAT. The man is the number one all-time leader in points scored, and he has a pass-first mentality. How do you do that? How is that even possible? No one has ever in the history of LeBron James' career ever called LeBron James a chuck. Never. He's never been considered a gunner, a ball hawk, anything. He's the all-time leading scorer in NBA history. You know why? Because he respected the game enough to play when he was healthy. He scored at a high clip for his entire career, and he scored efficiently throughout his entire career. And as he ages, he becomes more efficient. <laughs> How is that even possible? And I'm leaving off the fact that he's fourth all-time in assists. 
This guy, is, he has more points than Michael Jordan and more assists than Magic Johnson. That is insane. He, oh, I didn't even bring up the four championships, and two of them are probably considered two of the hardest championships ever won against the 73-9 and nine Golden State Warriors being down 3-1, as I mentioned earlier, and the bubble championship. Oh, you know, you think I'm tripping bringing up the bubble, right? The bubble was weak. The bubble didn't count. No, the bubble was probably the hardest championship to win outside of the 2016 championship because all the circumstances involved. Uh, There were people screaming that they were having breakdowns in the bubble, mental breakdowns. LeBron and AD and all those guys tuned all that off and went and won a championship. Now, y'all say it don't count, and the only reason why you say it don't count is because LeBron won it, and he won finals MVP. Had AD won finals MVP, it would count, but you would put an asterisk next to LeBron's name because he didn't win finals MVP. I say all that to say LeBron is the GOAT, and y'all need to stop hating on the man. This is a pro LeBron show, and if you come (laughs) on this show talking that dumb stuff, you... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know the rest. You out of here. <laughs> oh man, that this is uh it's been our very first episode. I think it went pretty well, don't you agree? I agree. Neil. Yeah, no, this is great. I'm glad that we settled that like first step. Dude, you know what I mean? Like that's, that, that was his idea. You have that to, was you his gotta, idea. You gotta, the, you gotta you establish gotta, that early. The for line the, in the stand. For yeah. the for the guests that come in later talking that dumb <laughs> stuff. We ain't having it. We'll cut the show short. Did you watch the first episode. <laughs> like, you you watch, better watch the first episode. That, that's gonna that's, be the that's gonna be the criteria. We're gonna yeah, send yeah. them a Google form. <laughs> I will fill it out. Did you watch the first episode? <laughs> nah, you can't be here, my boy. You out of here. But uh four quarters are done. Regulation is over. We are now headed into OT. I know y'all think that's overtime, but it's not. It is a segment that we like to call off topic, where we talk about things that are non-basketball related. Because, you know, we're pretty well-rounded guys, myself, Raymond Burr, and Super Producer Neil. And we're going to talk about things non-basketball related. And I got something <laughs> on my mind that I want I want to talk about. Um, over, <laughs> over the past couple of years, uh, I've been an advocate of exposing BS. And um, one of the things that I like to expose is... Uh, people being overrated and giving too much love for the things that they've done in, in their careers. Uh, the person that that people say I attack, I don't, I don't attack. I just, I just speak facts. Uh, the people that they say I, I, I come at real, real crazy is um is Buster Rhymes. People say I hate Buster Rhymes. People tag me in all kinds of Buster Rhymes stuff when he's winning a lifetime achievement award, <laughs> or whether he's lost fifty pounds or he's in the gym all crazy. Uh, they post me in a lot of Buster Rhymes videos and reels and all that stuff, but what they never po- tag me in is Buster Rhymes bars. You know why? <laughs> because Buster Rhymes doesn't really have bars. You sit here and you tell me that Buster Rhymes is a top MC of all time and he's just simply not. That's not the case. And when and, and, and when I uh I did a segment uh, a couple years ago, you might remember uh hashtag better than Buster right. where I name 100 MCs once a one one MC per day for 100 days straight Neil, I named a better MC than Buster Rhymes. And people were in the comments just hating, saying I'm crazy, saying I'm just, I, I, I just hate the guy. When I don't, I'm simply pointing out the fact that he's not as good as people make him out to be. And then when I I, I challenge them to, uh, you know, since, since you think he's one of the goats, quote something. <laughs> Send me some Buster Ron bars. Send me some Buster Ron bars, some, some thought provoking, some uh, supremely lyrical bars from Buster Rhymes, and they never do it. They can't do it, but I can post some bars for you. 
I can post some bars and state my claim that Buster Rhymes is not one of the goats. I roam through the forest just like a brontosaurus. Trash. Born in the month of May, so my sign is Taurus. Kick you in your face like my name was Chuck Norris. Trash. <laughs> Complete and utter trash. Buster Rhymes starts off a song for 12 bars just saying, y'all, y'all, y'all. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Buster Rhymes doesn't have any classics in his catalog at all. He's got he's got hits. Don't right. get me wrong. He, do got, hits. he got crazy hits. Have you listened to the lyrics in those hits? <laughs> I mean, this is do, do my thing is pretty funny if you just read it. <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> Look, oh it's, my god, it's thank, pretty funny. Thank you, thank you, Neil. Uh, in do my thing, it's it's pretty funny. I'll bring it up <laughs> so people if you can jump on the YouTube and like go check it out. But it's pretty. I mean, <laughs> I'm just wondering. <laughs> Thing, baby. Oh, thank you fast. Yeah, yeah. And then he's just rhyming ass with plexiglass. Just rhyming, <laughs> just rhyming words, yeah. just to rhyme plexiglass and ass, <laughs> half and laugh, was song and new and John. That don't even rhyme. <laughs> the solar features like Olivia Newton John. That's okay. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Coming. It's an eye opener, isn't it? <laughs> Coming soon. I will King Kong. I will not be saying that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like Gorilla Monsoon soon. Oof. Oof. Yeah. Exactly. I, I'm no. I, oh, oh, and there's a. It, it, our, our key word today is plethora. There's a plethora <laughs> of bars, <laughs> trash bars from Buster Rhymes. We'll have to go through all through the whole lyrics because this is that's a painst- <laughs> painstaking task. It's not it's not Listen, gonna be man, fun. Hold, my favorite busted joint all the time is Tear the Roof Off. Tear the Roof Off, uh produced by Swiss Beats. I used to love that song off of uh Extinction Level Event. I had that album. When we used to go to uh what is it? Where we used to always go? What's it? Uh Damn, I can't even name the club. It was a spot in Jersey. <laughs> you okay. talking about Metropolis? Metrop. When we go to Trop <laughs> and tear the roof off, I used to go crazy. Okay. That was my song. But it, it was your song, but you can't quote nothing can't from quote the song. Nothing. I can't even, I can't remember anything other than the hook. Then no hook. And <laughs> why is that, Raymond Bird? <laughs> because he's trash on the mic. He's not good <laughs> lyrically. Yes, he has a great flow. He has a great cadence, a great voice, which masks his lack of lyrical dexterity. He cannot piece together thought-provoking, ill rhymes. We can't say that about Nas. We can't say that about Jay-Z. We can't say that about Biggie. Even Tupac, who we both feel is kind of overrated. Very much overrated has come up with thought-provoking bars. You can quote some Tupac. Facts. You can't quote Buster Rhymes <laughs> besides y'all, y'all, y'all. <laughs> I got you all in check. And put your hands where my eyes can see. <laughs> hey, he's laughing because he knows I'm telling the truth. Y'all can't quote Buster Rhymes because Buster Rhymes doesn't have anything quotable. End scene. I'm done. <laughs> this has been episode one of High IQ Basketball with Brian Osley and Raymond Burr. Shout out to super producer Neil and Drop Tent Media Network, man. We appreciate you. We looking for we looking forward to a long term relationship with you guys. And uh, we'll be tuning in with you guys next week. We're going to talk about um, the week in review as far as uh, NBA tip off okay. 2023. And that's going to be a great episode as well. Thank you, guys. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel at High IQ Basketball with Brian Osley. Uh, go to Instagram and follow us at HIQ Hoops. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Peace. If fortune favors the bold, that's why I keep on just winning. If timing is just the essence, then I'm going to keep on just spending. I'm work for a couple of bucks. Shout out to Ante the Koompa. Dropping in Bebo Fox that's seeping into your blue. This has been a Drop Tent Media production.